Today on Media Lara Sandwich, we're with Iron Maiden, the Kiss Fits. Those. I don't know. Not... <laughs> they must be the Lords of October, then. Lords of October. Lords of October. Uh, we can agree on that. Welcome to Media Lawyer Sandwich. I'm Cody from Toten.com and Meteor Litter Media. Meteor. Yeah, Media Litter Sandwich. <laughs> it's a Meteor Sandwich today. <laughs> so we got Crazy Mark from CrazyMark.com. And okay, I'm a little scared. Um, who are you guys? Lords of October. What? I thought we were Merciful Fate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the wrong fucking band. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Who the hell are you? <laughs> 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 Trigor! Wait, wait, wait. Wrong song? No, but honestly, we got you here. We have you gathered here today because we want to talk. We're to here to take over yeah. the world, and, well, we need a lot of help. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, go ahead. Um, Lords of October. Yeah. Um, and each one of you have stage names. Do you want to go ahead and, and say which one, all your stage names? We'll just pass the microphone around. Okay. Uh, don't feel like you always have to hold the mic when you're talking. <laughs> I am uh, Lucifer Fulci, luciferfulci.com. That's his last name, luciferfulci.com. Yeah. I'm Uncle Salem. 
No, I'm gonna lose this. This is stupid. I liked it. <laughs> it's interesting. And I am October Phoenix. Hey, October. Welcome. Hey, thanks, buddy. <laughs> Wait, you have the name of the band. Does that mean you're the key member? It's yes. A, it's a long story. You can interpret it as you will. I kind of just, uh, I was given this name. We kind of just went with it. So. It's rising. So don't think too much into it. You know, I am rising. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> he, said he, he just came in here at 6'4", 6'7", now. So, uh, <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> All right. Uh, How long have you guys been together? Well, almost three years. Yeah, about three years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we, we started out, you know, the myself, Uncle Salem, and Alistair, we were going to get together and just have some fun. You know, we've known each other for years. We had a lot of same sensibilities. And so we got together, and he was trying to play some drums, you know, got little home studio going on, and then we realized we didn't just want to play Kiss covers. We had something more involved. Which we were playing every Kiss song you could think of at first. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. like, hey, so is that where the makeup song? comes from? I actually <laughs> stole it from Gene Simmons' locker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, at the point where we said, hey, let's like do this for real. We need a real drummer. We, we put the word out. I talked with a few guys, which were absolutely not, and when we finally met October, it was an settled. absolute yes and no other. And he's since become a brother to us. Like, not just in this band, but like, you know, personally as a, as a friend and a, and a brother. You know? That's part of it. That's a huge part of it because we're like a family. And everybody says that, but we really mean it. So, I mean, like, the three years here, man, aren't there any times where, man, we're out on the road, we're just not getting along? Have there ever been those close calls where it's like, that's it, the band's done? No, not to that extent. Oh man, three years is better than any band I've been. Minor in. disagreements, and we get in a room together, and we're all like, "Oh man, <laughs> it's, it's brother fighting." Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we're yeah. big on communication. So yep. if something bothers us, you know, at the most we'll let it stew for a couple of hours, but then after that, you know, we gotta talk about things. You know? Right. We have to. I, I don't care if it's gonna hurt somebody's feelings, but it's gonna be so much better if we all talk about things rather than let it stew and just kind of ignore it, because then you're gonna damage yourself in the long run. Right. Okay. So about branding, was that something you all, because I mean, you all got different makeup, you all got, was that something all decided on together? Can I answer this one? Yeah, go ahead. Well, you know, we're kind of, we're all into that already. Mm -hmm. So it was like a natural, it wasn't a thought of like, oh, let's just be a brand and kind of, we're going to be Lords of October. Well, you know, once you decide, like, you know, I'm not going to put, put on makeup tonight, you know, I'll just, just go do it. And then everyone's going to be like, dude, that's, that's not you, man. Right, totally. So you have to have that or you don't. Right, you're not gonna be able to force it and be like, so we have that. That's something that's already in our backgrounds. Mm -hmm. We love Halloween, we love horror, and it seemed like that's the thing to do. We want to stand out a little bit, you know. Now stand. I got a question here. Got a question. They might have an answer. Yeah. yeah, they might have an answer. Yeah, forty-two. So, so Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Salem, that's right? It. Yes. Did you all research the name to make sure there was no other Lords of October? Yes, we did. Cool. Excellent. Yes. That's that's fantastic because so many bands will go into it and say, we're going to call ourselves The Cause. And there's right. a bunch of other causes. That happened with my old band. That happened to Wrathchild out of Baltimore, Maryland. Wrathchild is a no-brainer. They, they, they got to the table, man. They were getting ready to sign this. Somebody else has the name. And they're like, well, what are we going to call ourselves? Wrathchild, Wrathchild America. LA. Oh, wait. Was it Wrathchild America or yeah, Wrathchild it was, LA? No, it was Wrathchild America. Right. And that was stupid. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was a last now we're decision. in a feud with Wrath Child America. It's like, eh, the budget bin. Yeah. 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 Wrath Child was a good name, though. Yeah. 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 That's a Wrath Child. Yeah, because I'm a Wrath Child. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk Iron Maiden all day long. All day long. If you want to do that? All day long. I think I'm okay. I got a question for Alex. You're here. That's what do you awesome. do in the band? Uh, be terrible. <laughs> you be terrible. I play the guitar and sing the backup vocals. Right on, man. So who got you into the guitar? Uh, Uncle Salem. Oh, so it, there's a, a, a line of influence here. That's totally family right there. I mean, teaching. Or is it just like, hey, we need another player. I'm going to just teach how to do this because, well, you listen. Well, that is kind of, that is kind of really the idea, honestly, because very young. You started out mm -hmm. playing very young. 
the kind of the idea is, well, we need somebody to play. I never got better. So either. here, play this. What? <laughs> hey, there's a lot of guitarists out there. That's that not true. Better. Not but true. Hey. I can play Smoke on the Water, kind of. He can almost <laughs> play Smoke on the Water. <laughs> almost. Right on, I'm right really on. close. He's gotten a little better. I got to I gotta say, though, when uh, I first heard these two together come and, and just playing some Kiss songs, they're, um, what do you call it? When The flow. Was chemistry. Just, the chemistry yeah. and the flow of music. And the harmonizing between the vocals, it was spot on. I love when a guitar player can sing and honestly sing and harmonize. It was it was perfect match. Perfect match. And how many albums have you guys recorded together? Three. three. Yep, three. We have the first one, which is just like a self-titled EP. The second one, which is most recent, is Equinox. And we have a, a live one that got recorded at Machine Shop that has just been released. And you can get that one for free. Where can people go online to check it out, man? Where well, can they get it? You can find us. Actually, if you just go to the Facebook page, yeah. Orange of October, you can find everything. But is there an, an, a more complete page? Honestly, these days, with how we're connected, you could go to Google yeah, just and search in. Lords yeah. of October. And, you know, we go through CD Baby for some stuff. Mm -hmm. All of the standards that are out there right now, Reverb Nation, SoundCloud. And you can download the um, live album on SoundCloud. Yeah. Right? Mm hmm Yep, for yep, free. That's all free. Yeah, on Spotify as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. So are we? Yeah. Yay. Shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> CD Baby's been amazing in in the kind of community that music is in these days. If you're gonna go with somebody, CD Baby is one of those that will get you out on every platform that there is. So if you just Google us, you'll find us. Oh shit, they got shit on YouTube that CD Baby puts up, and it's a, it's a no brainer. I do kind of wish it was still like the 80s and 90s where not everything was just so readily available and you listen to it on a little computer speaker, but it is the way that it is. Right. So you can find us yeah. everywhere. We've adapted. Mm -hmm. Notice you guys got a few music videos. What's the newest one? Autumn Fire. Okay. So uh, we got permission to play that? Yeah. All right, cool. So we'll play that Sweet. at some point. Sweet. Sweet. I got a question here for October. Yes, sir. Now, how, sir. <laughs> it's because you're license, all... license and registration. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, right. What, what did you bring to Lords of October? What What is your key role? Here? Pizza. Looking good. <laughs> yes. I, I do love pizza my roll. pizza. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, honestly, it, as they were talking, you know, these guys were together. I answered a, an ad that they put out there. And the I, SDM. I, oh, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was the first one. That was, the, but, but then oh, the oh, Greg, Celeste. <laughs> don't tell everyone. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know. You know, I'm I'm kind of one of those guys where I'll come in and and add what I add, and they'll tell me what I add. But here I am. I'm just doing my thing. You know, I'm trying to do my best to yeah. add. And I think what are you adding I to the band? Is it cowbell? What is it? He plays <laughs> drums. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah I'm sorry. I'm the what he does because he's very high energy, very high so energy. He's and here and on stage. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's, a, he's a beast on the drums. I've heard but the jams, he's, man. It's he's like, also very musical, and that's something that, like, I've had a lot of drummers over the years, and having a musical drummer is amazing. Because I mean, do so much more. Most drummers, they're like all of a sudden jumping around everywhere. He's here, then he's over there. He's, right. He's distracted and off over there. No, he comes back with a beer. And, he's oh, super he's, focused. He's chilled, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like Neil Peart. Like, yep. like, That's not a bad comparison. No, it's not. And I love that you pronounce his last name correctly, Peart. That's very nice. Well, I like a lot of people guy. call it Part or something. Peart. Peart. Yeah. all the time. We could actually that. talk a whole lot more about Rush than Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> well, he could. He could, yeah. <laughs> um, and if I may, too, mm -hmm. also what October brings, like, I think we all sort of bring this multi instrumentalist mentality. We all play more than one instrument. I mean, we mm -hmm. stick to our things while we're recording and playing, but I mean, over at his place, he's got bass guitars, he makes guitars, he fixed a few of my basses, and, you know, he's brought musical knowledge to the songs that we write. Yep. So he's not just saying, okay, let's just do this beat or whatever. We all kind of contribute in that way, but because he's a multi-instrumentalist, he adds all those sensibilities in where maybe other drummers don't. So October is also a luthier? Yes. Amateur. 
Yeah. Still, though, you know, Man, it's a high he made, demand. He you made can... some of my basses sound great. A new five string I got, and this dude is, he's awesome. But he's you're in legit. high demand if you can really work with wood. Yeah. Right. No comment. <laughs> 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 Oh my god. The <laughs> the puns, stupid. Yeah, no. <laughs> the puns, ladies. No. <laughs> Fun seriously. I like this guy. Back to the interview. <laughs> Toden, I know you're itching to ask some uh, like technical questions. Well, first I want to know um how do you guys survive on being a band? Survive mean, like, survive like financially. We don't. <laughs> That's the bottom line is we don't yet. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe well, at some financially point. Financially as a band. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's the answer. We, we, we really do not don't. survive right. financially as a band, but you know, uh, when when I am not in character, I'm a social worker. Mm -hmm. I work with people um, in the city of Flint uh, with drug addiction and homelessness and the water issue, and I've been doing that for ten years. And so that's what I do, you know, by day, and then by night, you know, Bruce Wayne, Batman kind of thing. And uh, I'm a writer. Okay. Yeah. I, I guard my room. Very tight. <laughs> <laughs> it's my full time job. Internet troll. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. He just he's just magic with like cars and stuff. Yeah, actually I'm an analyst for General Motors. Oh, okay. So that's my <laughs> All that's right. my Bruce Lee. And and mm -hmm. do you work in Detroit or Flint? I work in the Saginaw actually. Oh, okay. All right, cool. All of a sudden it's like I do this and it's I'm with GM. <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh. I was hoping it said downtown. CEO. I was hoping it said downtown Detroit. Like, oh, you're just down the street from me. <laughs> but then again, this guy over here, you know, Lucifer's working for, uh, right? Lucifer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like he's got really angel's wings, and he's really working for the community, you know? He's really rocking it for the for the area. He's the good guy. Yeah. So so don't take, so, so don't good. judge a book well, lad's cover. Yeah. Bruce Wayne. Oh. Bruce Wayne works for him. Yeah, Batman punches people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that, that's that, that's just the jacket. But when the jacket comes off, that was another book joke. Yeah, yeah. 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 Good one. I got it. now. <laughs> you know, one of the thing. I'm really proud of these guys. I'm proud of what we do and who we are as people because I know you know we all have known a lot of people. I've been in bands. I've lived in LA 20 years. You, you know, I've seen the shit, and I've been blessed with the shinola here. We're uh. The kind of people, you know, we, we don't party. We don't do that kind of thing. Um, oh, man, you're not cool enough for me. <laughs> I, Bye. It was one of those things. I've been I've been uh, clean and sober a decade now, and I can't say that these guys ever even had any sort of issue going on. They just don't do shit. And that's part of, like, what really attracts us to one another because we're not trying to be like, oh, well, hold on a second, pass that doobie, which I got no problem with if that's what other people want to do, but it, it don't got no place in this band. No. And what we do as people during the day puts into what our band fund is. And then we collectively decide, you know, what we're going to do. We're going to buy shirts. We're going to make CDs. We're going to, you know, go out there and pick, get some new tires for the, the tour van or whatever we're going to decide. We do it mm -hmm. together. And that's just something that we're really happy to do. Mm -hmm. This is the easiest fucking band to play in. Yep. It's Agreed. super duper easy. And how many long, bands we've been in? Mm -hmm. Over the years, this is the easiest band. And as long as we communicate, like October said, and, and we all you know, have this some kind of passion for the music, then we're going to keep making the kind of music that we hope other people want to hear. And we know what we love and what we grew up on. And I'm, I love these guys. I so love these guys. It's three years without drama? No, it's not <laughs> drama like the other bands might no. have. It's just no. not like that. I mean, we not have certain issues that are discussed, and, you know, we have a great... How dare you change your makeup like that? Uh -uh. That's kind of what it is, this. honestly. That's kind of it. It's very band-specific, small things that you would never... They would never blow up because it's too stupid. You'd do it. <laughs> That's stupid because tomorrow I can change the makeup back. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's, it's never nothing, nothing that we can't come back from. Yeah, it's like, it's I, I just wanted to make the symbol in my head a Star Trek uh, Starfleet symbol just for one night. Come on, guys! Right, right, right. <laughs> that would be awesome. Right, that would. Yeah, be we wouldn't even be mad about that. Because <laughs> really, that Whatever. looks like Klingon over there it on seems you. Seems logical. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm looking at. It almost looks like the Starfleet symbol. This oh. is actually an elder sign, uh, like from okay. Lovecraftian mythos. And uh, I believe it was my wife who actually suggested doing that in, in the first place because we're like, 
huge board game geeks and read a lot of Lovecraft. Yeah, if there's a horror thing going on, mm-hmm. we're we're in on it. We're, that's you know that's a big part of it. If I can, can I plug some other stuff too? Because please, we, yeah, we all, absolutely. We um, <laughs> it just sounds sounds like boastful, but these guys are so talented, and so we're we're writers. We have books and other things that we do. If it's horror or science fiction, if it's comedy, if it's good humor and just different, that's what we're we're totally into. So I wanted to say, and we'll go down the line here, if I may. Yeah. Um, I have a brand new book. That's called The Elder Thing, and it's a Lovecraftian type of magic and monsters type of novel. Not to be confused with Elder Scrolls. No, no, The Elder Thing. It's a disgusting thing. And um, that's one of my newest ones. And then I also have a children's book I wrote with my wife called The Halloween Society. Oh, that's so good. She did the artwork, I did the story, and some of the characters are named after our children. And Mm -hmm. actually, um, after our... Uh, Alistair in his, in his, by his real name. And I have those couple things right now that I was kind of hoping to mention. Yeah, absolutely, what man. Hey, about. this is a whole media sandwich. We don't we don't we don't just put a in a media sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't just put in the ketchup and mustard. We got all the litter that's going on everywhere else. So everything yeah. that you drop down, we pick up, put it on that that hot dog on that sandwich and force it down other people's throats. Well, I would love to force my books down your throat, but I don't know if they would fit. We got this um, thing coming up April Ghoul's Day at the Flint Farmers Market on mm-hmm. April seventh, and we're all well, three of us will be there with books, but we're gonna have Lords of October merch and everything. We do uh events, community events. We 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 ran the Flint Horror Con with some other guys for years. And we do the monster marketplace and stuff like that. So Yeah, I've been to the uh the couple of the uh, the this year was a horror film festival. Yeah, last was year awesome. was a horror uh, other thing. Uh, Monster Marketplace. Monster Market. That's it. Yep, and yeah. I do have a cosplay video up of that on the YouTube. YouTube.com slash Um <laughs> and We're doing the Flint Film Fest again, the Fright Film okay. Fest. We're doing that again this year. Oh, yeah. There are I some actually, good movies there. I didn't get to go to it, but it, I, it was I've great. seen some of the movies. He won one. He won an award for one. I was going to say, they sweet. gave me an award, the John Cockrell Memorial Award, who was a friend of ours that passed away. Um, the proprietors of the movie fest, they awarded me with this really nice plaque and I was quite honored to meet John Cockrum's father there and be able to, that was sweet. to watch my movie up on the screen. It's called The Idol and it's on YouTube and okay. it's free to watch. And um, those are a few of the things that I do. You know, I have a brand new um, solo CD, which is more death metal type of shit mm-hmm. that I do aside from these guys. Um, and that's brand new. It's just called Lucifer. So that's a few of the things that I've... always got to wonder, how, how do these guys do it? Because like, you got kids, too, right? You said mm-hmm. you have kids. You have solo project, a band, and several books. Mm-hmm. I'm a Virgo. And, and, <laughs> and you have a day job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how do you do this? No, no. Yeah. I, don't, I don't sleep. <laughs> I just want to say one thing. My secret, if you really want to know if it's not rhetorical, I'll say, how do I do this? I do this with the support of family members like these guys. And a, an amazing family at home. My wife, uh, Sarah, and my son Damon are 100% behind me with artwork, with makeup, with um, photography. We all support one another. And like I said, I, I love these guys, and that's how I do it. Mm-hmm. Now, Uncle Salem, I know you have your hands in publishing also. I Tell do. us about it. Well, I do a magazine every year called uh, Halloween Machine, four or five times a year. Because I looked around, there's in March, there's nothing you can read about Halloween, right? So I'm like, we have to make this ourselves. So I only know of Haunt World. I don't know if they're still Haunt around. World is great, but they they focus on right. haunts, literally. And so this, I want to be all-encompassing Halloween. It's like a labor of love that I do. And and I put everybody in there for free. Mm-hmm. And I'm not making any money off it myself either. So, But that's one thing I do. And then I write books. Um, him, he and I just wrote a book, Phoenix and I. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, called They Saw, They See Us. And it's a collection of scary short stories. We'll have that at April Fool's Day. And these are original stories you, yeah, you yeah. all collaborate on and write. Right, yes. Oh, right. Sweet. And then uh, uh, we, I do kids' books as well. And I also write for Flint Comics, and I write for Remort Magazine. So, yeah, it's it's, it's really fun. And, and he's, he's the even, real writer. <laughs> oh, he's the you. real one, right. I, not me. 
It's I him. mean, even though they're all around the horror line, it's still different. Well, I, it, it's different things. I, I don't just stay in the horror. Okay. It's just, it's mostly horror. I write whatever the muse, you know, I actually okay. wrote a, a book for young adults called uh, something we could never be, which I'm trying to get out there, but it's more like a, a movie for probably teenagers. Okay. And you both self publish, right? Mostly. Most I know, I know. you're, you're off public. a couple different things. Yeah, we've been on in, with different publishers. So mm -hmm. my publisher just went under, actually. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now I am back to self publishing, but and, and I love that because I have control over everything. Mm -hmm. The worst part of that is obviously marketing. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. We'll uh, you two got side projects you like to talk about? Yeah, we have we have the, the little side project, mm -hmm. the little band side project thing uh, we do every once in a while. Yeah. yeah, it's just a. A band that we do with whoever can make it to a show. <laughs> so like basically, all of our friends are in this band, including him. He doesn't even know it yet. <laughs> like it's everyone we know that plays music. They're in this band, and we just go. We'll go like, well, can you make it to this show? All right, you play these three songs. That's called Fun by Decree. It's our super group. It's our super group of the whole entire city and state of <laughs> <Yeah>. Michigan, <laughs> city of Flint, it's state of Michigan. Wasn't all the low, man. Sounds go, go, fun. Go, go, go. Yeah, by Decree. <laughs> Which I, that's a line from a Twisted Sister song. Look, Alistair, I'm going to out this mother because <laughs> I'm going to tell you the truth is that he's been working on his craft since he was a little kid. He has. And he's 22 now. He plays now. 23? 21. 21. So he's very young. Very young. It's like half my age. He writes too really well on guitar. Exactly that. And he's being humble. And that's why he I want to out him because. He will post things to us, new songs, riffs, and all kinds of stuff. It'll be an entire song with the drums, bass, guitar, yeah. everything just already there. Yeah, he's I, very talented. I heard a, a most recent thing that he was doing, and it's it's very awesome, and he's really coming into his own here. You know, for the most part, when we began this band, I had a bunch of different stuff, originals. said, let's make these like this. So we did, and then we started to say, let's add things from everybody to make them more of our own. And he's written one of our... Biggest fan favorite songs, Black Phillip, uh, inspired from the movie The Witch, that people adore and love, and we want to hear more of that from him. But don't let his quiet ass fool you. Yeah, he, he's, he's talented. He's very, very into his music and his craft. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and eating Pop Tarts. <laughs> That's that is his day job. Yes, but what <laughs> kind of Pop Tarts? I'm really not picky. He likes the off, <laughs> you like the off brands more, right? I do like the off brands because the off brands fill the pop darts more. Like, <laughs> all right, I, I got to ask about some of the show <laughs> stuff. When you guys go play a show, what's been like the oddest combination? Because I know you oh. guys probably done some stuff coming. I don't know, coming after a country band or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, we were supposed to open for Corey Haim. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> that was the Corey, weirdest fucking. What was it? Feldman. Or Corey, Corey Oh, Feldman. Corey Feldman. It would be really Feldman. weird if you're opening for Corey Haim. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's passed away. Are you talking about the Corey Feldman, the guy with all a bunch of girls? Yes, so Corey yes. Feldman's next show on his tour after all the shit went down was with Lords of October. Wow. wow. Man, I actually did buy a Corey Feldman CD because I was curious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I am so sorry. sorry. What, 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 what was it like to work It was with heavily Corey? discounted. Well, okay. we, we, I talked once to his manager. Oh, okay. And that was it. So he kind of like holds up in a room full of girls and does his uh, fruit. I don't, I don't even know stuff. what he does, but I was really <laughs> wanted, I wanted he, to meet him because, you know, he's got the, the Friday the 13th and the Lost Boys. Uh, he was on that wife swap or whatever, his celebrity <laughs> wife <laughs> swap. And he's like, <laughs> well, if you're you're my girl, you have to fruit and you have to do this and you got to do that. Yeah, yeah. And you have to do this on my schedule and blah, blah, blah. But you know what, what I thought about was it's still Edgar Frog. Right? All in all, yeah. it's, it's Edgar Frog. Come on, man. Tommy Jarvis. Tommy Jarvis, yeah. When I was 12 years old, me and my brother Joe, we bought four, we bought tickets for four consecutive shows of Friday the 13th, the final chapter, <laughs> awesome. and watched that for eight hours and oh, on like man. a dollar day, like long ago in 84. And since then, all I see when I see Corey Feldman is Tommy Jarvis killing Jason Voorhees yeah. and I would play with him just for that alone yep but all this other stuff it was going to be a very strange it was going to be odd and then they canceled oh, yeah. it and, and we also had a, like whatever you we know? also had our friends Brobot and they were going to be on the same bill and that's a completely different band so we had Feldman and then like a rock rap thing for lack of a better term and oh, then yeah. us and that would have been 
I, yeah. I just want to look up the branding for Brobot. I want to see, like, is it a robot with, like, a backwards hat and it was supposed like, to be their fist last bumping? Show it was supposed to be their last show. Oh, they were man. disassembling Some the Greek robot. letters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're rebuilding Robot 2.0 now. Yeah. Yeah. Robot 2.0, yeah. the match. return of the beer pong. <laughs> we have had, actually, a couple of strange shows where we were on a bill with, like, you know, a classic rock band or just something like that at, at Jester's. We played a couple of odd oh, ones there with some bands. Yeah, a bunch of blues bands. Yeah, it was yeah. kind of weird, but, but we won them over. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Man. They liked us at the end. <laughs> at the beginning, you could see everybody just like, what is happening? What? Wow. Goblin rides. What's going on? And you did this without a big screen in front of you all. You know, the beer yeah. Bands no, no. Yep. No, they were cool. They actually liked us. After one or two songs in, they were they were there. Right on, man. That means Plenty you're, you're solid, man. <laughs> solid. Yeah, we're definitely looking to branch out to, to, you know, get different places, to get out of state. You know, with all the things we've got going on, we've been able and fortunate to perform at different places that are yeah. you know, within Michigan. And, you know, we want to just get out a little bit at a time. we got to time things right. If we're paying for things ourselves, unless we get some sort of backing, you know, we're going to do it in a way that's, um, comfortable for everybody as individuals, but then also get out there on weekends. And we've got an awesome manager who's been helping us and making good contacts for us. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've been doing this long enough. I kind of just know like nothing fucking happens overnight. Right. And that you stay the course, you keep doing the thing, and then things are bound to happen. Right. You know, the last band that I was in, the first serious band I was in, the last one out in LA, it took us. The first months. serious band was the last one. What that I was in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I played with some other people for whatever. For a second, I thought you were naming like it was called the last one. <laughs> no, Ooh. no. The band the band was Penis Flytrap and we had oh. a pretty good following out in LA in the death rock scene, but it took us ten good years before they paid us to come to Germany and paid us to go here and there and we could say, Oh, you know, we're making a little bit of money from this. But it was ten years along and we had people right. that had been doing it for twenty years before that. To be here in Flint Town doing what we do, we're grateful and fortunate to even be asked to play right. Jester's or right. Machine Shop. Those are places I've wanted to play over the years because I'm from here. So when I finally came back, mm -hmm. like, fuck yeah, I'm going to play Machine Shop. Great sound, good sound guy, and just like... Great crowd. Yeah, yeah. sold out crowd. Cool we bands did, we've we always did, played uh, with there. Halloween in July with 7-Eleven Entertainment. I couldn't believe that shit because I'm like, oh, we played the bar here and there. We get there and the place is sold out. I'm like, okay. There's people in the crowd that be knew cool. our songs. And mm -hmm. I'm looking down there singing them back to us. I'm like, wow, this, yeah. that's really cool. That's know? that's a good feeling. Yeah, that that's was a good amazing. Feeling. Now, this was L.A. how long ago? Was it like back in 2005, 2006? I've been here now again for 10 years. And I was out there from 88 till 2007. All just right. about around that time. So I, I got to wonder, were you ever on the same bill with uh, Peppermint Creeps? Yes. You were. They sound mm -hmm. delicious. With, with, with Macy and uh, the rest of the guys. Yeah. I don't know who Macy is, but I know the Peppermint Creeps because we played with them. And everybody yeah. that wore makeup or had any gothiness to them. Yeah. We played <clears throat> everywhere down over there and with all those people. <laughs> yeah. Peppermint Creeps had this thing going on with fluorescent green and fluorescent red mm -hmm. and pink and blue and uh they they you know did their hair that way macy malone was lead was i guess it was uh the, the lead guitarist lead vocalist of the band mm -hmm. but cool you were on the same uh crazy mark tv covered them years ago okay you know? cool. yeah yeah i remember them from a long time ago i it was my first real band i was initiated into that band through people that looked like this and before that i was like some like little unibrow horror movie nerd I didn't know fucking shit about playing or nothing. I just, I mean, I played, but performing, they said, you need a costume. And, you know, my real name is David. And they're like, you need a different name. I remember it was 94. But these are the days like, I, I know. I know these are the days I, I know. was like, Why you go Lucifer. David? Lucifer is going to be the name. After <laughs> Lucio Fulci, the director, I'm Lucifer Fulci. Like, That'll work. And it's stuck ever since then. But yeah, we played with all those fucking people, man. Anybody How many times does it get misspelled? Fulci? Yeah. Oh man, I I never misspell it. <laughs> you know, that's a pretty genius move as a as a branding too. Yeah. Because people know him from there, you know, and then oh. And every once in a while I'll say like, yeah, I'm in a band and talk about it. Oh, Lucifer Fulci. Oh, cool, cool. 
So, now uh, we haven't heard much from October here. You were you're a drummer, you're a nope. multi musician, you're you're talented all, all different aspects. What what's been your past experience in bands and performing? Well, I started off before I could drum, really, trying to join bands here and there. And let me tell you, the best way to really learn and get better or learn that you're not good is yeah. to join a band mm-hmm. and have them <laughs> ghost you and tell you. True. But uh, you, you got to do that. I mean, if you're going to be serious about it, you got to do that. You got to do the hard stuff. Um, you know, I've played with guys before who treated me just like garbage. Oh, yeah. um, but, you know, you got to go through that kind of you gotta stuff. You got to have that um, chemistry absolutely. with the band. Absolutely. And I got to tell you, we, we're talking about family here. Is I've never had a band before where it is like family. You know, you, you see this guy kind of shy towards this guy. I'm kind of a shy guy anyway. Um, but yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, you know, shy it, ones. and it was such an eye opener because um, I've been I played with this one guy for about ten years, and we'd go through different singers and bass players, and and you know we kind of had a falling out because I just got sick of the shit. You know, he'd treat me like crap, and I'd be like, you know, I'm sorry, I got it. I just can't. I can't do this. I want to play, but I can't do this. And so I'd look for other guys to play. And I'd play with guys, you know, here and there, you know. And then I actually got with a band um, for about three years, Awkward Perkins. Um, and, Great name. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> love the name. I love that name. But, um, you know, you always had the one guy in the band who was always like a thorn in your side. And you try to ignore it, but you cannot ignore it. It does not go away. So uh, over time, it really adds up, you know, and builds up and everything. So um, that was my last serious band. Then I played here and there, you know, trying to make things work. But you just really can't force a band to work, which is why I was so thankful to meet these guys. Because, you know, I remember the first time we met at McDonald's, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. we were, you know, trying met to up at McDonald's. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We tried to get, you know, get together and talk about things. And, of course, uh, Alistair and I, you know. We shares. wanted to meet in public just in case he was like a serial killer. Or yeah, something. yeah. <laughs> um, and we kind of learned that way we could quick. hire him quicker. Yeah, yeah. The, um, these you want guys... to see how much of a hamburger he was? <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. The, the... Um, <laughs> Stop grimacing, folks. Police okay, chief, uh, Mick. Uh, what's his name? So uh, these oh. guys are in one generation, kind of an older generation without being too. Are you calling and, them old? No, no, definitely not. No, because I'm, no, because Alistair comes from the other generation, but I'm kind of in between. So I'll relate to these guys in a lot of aspects musically, but also Alistair and I really relate, you know, to the stuff like Blink-182, Green Day, and that kind of stuff. Um, mostly the newer kind of punk, punk pop a little bit. You but, lost me at Blink-182. Okay, well, sorry about that. But anyway. <laughs> That's why we're sitting over here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, we were actually, <laughs> we're getting together. Um, I actually wrote a comic book that I have published also. Okay. In, you it's know, hilarious. <laughs> I'll oh, be man. selling that at, uh, yeah, the, the April Ghoul's it's Day. It's very also. subversive. Is it like the Crumb it's, comics from long ago? Um, it's more subversive, maybe. It's mm. Yeah, it's called Exploder Motherfucker. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I hear Tony going and after those. Awesome. Awesome. I, I don't care sign who you movie. are. Is it okay Read to this say a little tiny bit about it? Direct yeah, Scott. go for it. Direct All right, here's, when people ask me about it, here's what I tell them. It's about a guy that was born from uh, an army general and a nuclear bomb. All right. So uh, he, at some point, he had sex with this bomb <laughs> and exploded oh, motherfucker okay. is the result. Did you see that in the beginning of it. Yes. <laughs> and it is so funny. He was passing it around, and we were like, you have to put this in a book because it was hilarious. We were crying and handing the pages out. And that was what was super cool about meeting October because we we're like drums, music, and this was all straight. And we talked about, you know, we don't party. Like, everything was cool. And then somewhere along the lines, he's like, check out this art. Yeah. And we had no idea. <laughs> he was, like, he was like, like, oh, I don't really do nothing. We're like, what? He made made little short films. Some of them were horror oriented. <laughs> he has like these huge graphic. No- he has a book that he wrote. How many pages is that book? I can't. Uh, it's a, it's 300 a, maybe? Listen, it's a hardbound <laughs> book. He brought this book in. It's bound like a regular book. Like he can't pull the pages out. He made this one book for himself. It's 300 page story. <laughs> Of just art and and it's hilarious dedication. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, this is a different level of dedication. Yeah, and it wasn't a part of like a selling point or anything. It no, just, he didn't care. He did it for we himself. Just wow. are all fucking weird in the same way, and <laughs> and that's what makes it very special. Because honestly, if he wasn't, we would still love whoever that might be. But we really lucked out. Yeah, we got lucky. Way. We got lucky. You never get that lucky on the first try with a drummer, man. No, no. you're telling me. 
fucking fills yeah. in there that I can play to. Like, I need that. I I I don't need the guy from. Uh, I don't need Peter Chris. I need fucking Eric Carr. You know right. what I'm saying? Yep. And we we got him, and that's you going in. <laughs> it will break your leg. He's going to be like, I got this really good job offer. Like, bam! <laughs> you ain't going anywhere. But, but it's be GM chained money. Back <laughs> chained oh, it's a October for life. <laughs> Let him out for sure. You get a job at Kmart, it's all right. I pretty much knew. I mean, when I the first time I came over, you know, we met, and then they wanted to play, and I thought about messing with them. Like starting to play songs and then play them just awfully horrible. But <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you never told me that. That's no, funny. I didn't. I was like, I, I thought about it. I seriously did. And they're like, you got? Do you listen to those songs that we? And I was like, yeah, yeah I kind of listen to them here and there. But the way I learn songs is by not listening to them and then you know playing along to what we find here. And that's what we did. The first song that we really Annabelle finished Lee. It was Annabelle Lee, and they you know we, they started playing it and I started hearing it and thinking about what's going to go here and then just it just comes out you know we all start playing music and it all just comes together he added a part to that that made the whole song work and it, you know not to get real specific and dwell on one song for a long time but i was playing it like and he's just like it's got all these little cool musical parts Sweet. like he played it one time through we we're just looking around like oh this is a much cooler song <laughs> i actually used two different snare drums in that song. Yeah, yeah. And that was another cool thing. There's another tune on the Equinox album called The Devil Also Dreams. Mm. And that was one that he just said, I got this idea. And he wrote drum tracks. And I listened, wrote some riffs. We agreed what we were going to do. He wrote lyrics. It came out that he created this. It was created drums first, mm -hmm. which doesn't always happen. No. It's not usually like that. When I write songs, I've got the idea in my head what it's going to be, and I'll try to like create. <laughs> That's another cool thing is if I'm writing something and recording a demo for these guys, then it's one idea. And I already know my drum machine or my drum programming is going to be like, okay, it's like this and like this and like this. When he gets it, it becomes musical. Yeah, yeah. And then when he gets it, he puts in chords yeah. that are not just an E going, <laughs> you know, because he knows how to play guitar where I just try to and then this poet motherfucker i don't even i don't even know what's going on sometimes these <laughs> lyrics i'm like how are you writing such poetry for songs about like necrophilia or whatever it might be <laughs> you know Very like family friendly, that comes to mind. i haven't done that one yet yeah i'm thinking no we don't but yes. like you know yeah it's, it's all very dark it's a very musical sort of base that we come from and in the future, I imagine the songs are going to be better too because we all can contribute more. We're working on a pretty ambitious thing right now. We can talk about that a little bit, right? Yeah, uh, I think so. We're going to make a concept record, which we've been working on. But not one of the ones where everybody's like, oh, a concept record. It's going to be where every song stands alone, but if you put it together, it tells a story. So we've been working on that, and the first one that we wrote is just, wow. I, I listen back to it. I'm like, wow, we, we wrote that. That's <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah we not need to everything. Hear that. Not everything is, you know, all. Um, I mean, we, there's hard rock, there's metal, there's punk. The, this is like straight horror movie soundtrack kind of ethereal. And I think those are the kind of bands we all truly love. Yep. They yeah. they go and they stand. Took some of inspiration from Merciful Fate there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh, like yeah. I know that. When I hear things I write, I know there's Black Sabbath in there. I know there's Rush in there because that's where I learned how to play <laughs> the fucking bass. That's part of the dynamic when when you hear it and you go, "Wow, this does sound like a Lords of October song." So what it is is all those separate influences. Right. You know? Well, you so know that, who else made a concept album? Corey Feldman. But but Lucifer, <laughs> tell, tell me dream. that Michael Anthony is not your inspiration. What's what's Love up? Vocals, vocals, right? I love Michael Anthony. Why do you know him? No, <laughs> Van Halen. But yeah, you, yeah. you got into playing the bass, and what? Why? Why the bass? Why? Who oh, turned you on to that? What? Gene Simmons. Oh, all right, yeah. all right, all right. I mean, I was in second grade. I didn't know anything, and I went to a store and opened a sixteen magazine that had a centerfold of Kiss from like Dress to Kill yeah. era. And I just was like, You're done right there. What is this yeah. that stands before me? So, all, so, then, <laughs> so then you pick the bass. You don't do the. No, no, the, I don't use a pick. Oh, you don't use a pick. No, no. I mean, I saw Gene and he was inspiring. That's when I learned what a bass was. 
But then a little bit later on, I, I watched and heard Rush and then I had this incredible music teacher who was like one of the inspirations and, you know, watched him play high school, things like that. He went to go play in a band called Prong and Flotsam and Jetsam. Yeah. And he played with such finesse. That's how I knew to play the bass. So I, I picked up shit off of Billy Sheen and Getty Lee and yeah. Flea. And so when you go like to play that, bass, you, would you describe yourself? <laughs> yeah, six, would you? Know. Would you describe yourself I'm as a technical six. bass with the bass up here or as somebody who really attacks the bass as a crotch rocket down here? <laughs> I, I would say that I'm a technical player with it halfway down. All right, all right. But sometimes I, I pick it up. If I'm, if I'm playing some other, you know, it just depends. But normally it's just much easier because I use my thumb a lot yeah. to like actually do the picking like, like that, like the gorilla hand, like Jerry only fucking shit. And that's, it just depends. I just don't like it too low. Because then all I could do is ride the E and then you can't, Crab you know. Because <laughs> yeah. I was just wondering, if you'd be like Gene Simmons, like you hit that E and pose. He does that stuff in practice. Oh. <laughs> you'd be like, I said what? I said yeah. I said all right. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, yeah. All right. And yeah, on podcast. Thunder. <laughs> yeah, I... You know what? I just I like all kind of good, but but you got to get to all the strings. Yeah, you got to be able to get to all the strings, and I I, I love all the good bass players. We're on a time <laughs> limit right here, so <laughs> yeah, do, do they have websites that they want to tell everybody where you to can go? Get to like he said, if you Google Lords of October, you can be there for a couple hours just checking stuff out. There's free downloads on certain pages, SoundCloud and Reverb Nation, I think. Or Re yeah, Reverb Nation. Yep. There's a Annabelle Lee download for free. Yep. And you can listen in on stuff. You can buy CDs everywhere. I mean, just really Google Lords of October. You'll find us. All right. And you can find Mark at? CrazyMark.com. And you can find me at Toten.com or YouTube.com slash Toten K. Uh, remember, the video version is way different from the audio version because if you're just listening, you can't see their pretty faces. <laughs> and, yeah, there are they're, they're some pretty faces, if you want to use that term. Um <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you can find Media Litter Sandwich on all sorts of pod apps. Um, just, you know, we're on most of them. If we're not on the one that you want to use, just let us know. We'll try to get on there. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed our discussion and may, may the, the algorithms, algorithms be in your, your favor. favor.